Good evening everybody, we got here another Age of Empires 2 4v4, this time on Nomad, a classic map, and we do have some very interesting teams, players who are well known in the community. We have Team Finland 4v4 versus Team China. Obviously we know with the likes of Lix, Vivi, Rubenstock, Zupi, we're going to see some interesting strategies and some messiness, and that's what we hope. And then we do have those big boomers like Yo, the Max, these guys that can take it to the late game. You never know what you're going to get with Nomad. Let's hope for something entertaining right now. As you can see, just starting to X off the map right off the bat, taking a look, seeing where the other players are, where they are themselves. Obviously no cartography at this point in time. So let's start taking a look as the players okay. begin to drop their docks as well as their town centers. So, for Team China, we do have Yo here in the southwest, and then just a little bit further east of him is Lix, his teammate, and then just to the northeast there is Vivi. Moving along upwards a little bit more, we do have Paladin, the fourth player for Team China, and he is on the Close far on. east side of the map. Interestingly enough, right across from Velez. So let's get right into the other team. Velez, we do have sitting right across from Paladin. That will be an interesting battle for sure over this Woodline Gold and Berries right off the bat. Other Finnish player is Zupi playing in the purple. Other, he's going to be another interesting player because he is sandwiched in between Lix as well as Yo. So obviously he will not be able to move around all that much, but what he might be able to do is delay these two players enough so that these two guys in the north, Rubenstock and of course the Max, can boom up, hit Castle Age, and bombard with obviously playing as Burmese. I expect to see a castle. And Lithuanians, maybe collect a couple of these relics and get some cavalry out there early. So, looking at the civilizations, let's take a look at exactly what we can expect. So, Rubenstock playing as the okay, Burmese. See, see. Because he is so distant, I would want to expect he would be going for a fast castle, but this is Rubenstock. You never know what you're going to get with Rubenstock. Never a player to play meta. The Max playing as the Lithuanians right next to him. I expect a big boom out of him. Another castle age time. Probably a fast castle from him, uh, especially playing as the Lithuanians. I'd prefer for him to wait till nights, but you never know. He might be he might end up just going for Scout Rush earlier on. This battle here between Velez playing as the Persians and Paladin playing as the Vietnamese. Obviously two very strong civilizations in their own rights. I do want to side with the Persians off the bat, just because Vietnamese being that the archer civilization, they do focus heavily on just fighting against archers. They've got skirmishers, they've got rattan archers, they, while rattan archers are very strong, period, they are not very strong at, compared to what they would be against an archer civilization. So, this will be a main focal point. And then moving a bit to the southwest, we do have Vivi playing as the Spanish. I do expect a boom out of him. While Vivi is a little bit of a forward player, aggressive sometimes, lately we've been seeing more of a boom out of him and it has really impressed me. Obviously playing as the Spanish, if he can go fast castle, get a castle up, get some conquistadors out, that'll be very strong, very strong in castle age. And then the other focal point I believe for this game is going to be down in the south between Lix, Zupi, and Yo. All of them are very close to each other. Yo is playing as the Lithuanian, and Yo is known for booming. I expect to see a little bit of aggression, but mostly a boom from Yo, while Lix and Zupi battle it out. Zupi playing as the Malians versus the Malians for Lix. Both of these players picking a very top civilization when it comes to Nomad. When we take a look at the population count, Rubenstock is very, very far behind. I'm not sure if he was maybe a little bit late getting his dock and town center up. Hey. Looks like there's no damage. He is building up some fishing ships. But him and Zupi are falling a little bit behind. And we do have the Max booming it up. Him and Yo 
no surprises there, but they are really maintaining their lead of ec economy right off the bat, trying to get ahead as much as possible. I see here Yo has only got Loom being researched right now. That is a little bit of a problem as he does not have... Oh, he's going fast castle. Sorry, he's going fast feudal. Pardon me. Great time for him. He is light years ahead of anyone else. Nobody else has clicked up at this point in time. While we do see that Lix is getting close and Velez is also getting close. The Max is the only one who has clicked up at this point in time. And look at this. Yo, walls in Zupi's villager. Zupi was trying to lame this deer. Will not be able to... Oh, barely, barely. Yo was able to keep this up. Not able to take it out. Zupi will lose that villager. And we do see wall off the beginning. On both of the main focal points. The issue, of course, being that Lix and Yo will both be in Feudal Age. Zupi will still be in Dark Age for a while. As far as the eastern part of the map, same sort of deal. We're seeing big wall-offs, making sure that they are protected, their economy can survive. And we do see on this side, the Finnish player will be in Feudal Age first. Let's see what kind of damage they can do. As Yo hits the Feudal Age, what will he do be to begin with? Let's take a look. Yo, showing with 10 military. Not sure whether that is a little bit of a glitch or not, because I do not see any military at this point in time for Yo. I think that might be a bit of an issue there. Sorry, that's 10 points for military. There we go, this makes much more sense. Zero military for everyone. And we do see Zupi, he is already collecting gold. Be interested to see what he does when he does choose to go up, but he is still in the Dark Age. He will be the last one up to Feudal. And he will be getting scout rushed by Lix. Mr. Yo, playing it fairly safe for him being fast Feudal. I'm assuming that he is just looking to go for water control, which is always very, very important in these Nomad games. Obviously, with the water control, you do gain a massive, massive advantage if you can take out the fishing ships of the enemy. See? As a point, Paladin did b build a dock in this middle lake, but it is not a very big lake. And he was already just down to one and a half shore fish left. Tower going up. In the back of Zupi's base, Lick's just going to be as annoying as possible, but his scout does get walled out. That is very good for Zupi to keep these scouts out. However, it will be difficult for him to take down this tower with the current villagers. Lots of idle time right now for Zupi, and that is causing massive delays in his economy. He is still in the Feudal Age, and look at this, Velez is clicking up to Castle. First player in the Castle Age, and I expect we will see Persian Knights coming out right off the bat. As far as military, Yo has built some military up that is all on water right now, but it is a little bit of a mass of galleys that he is getting up right now, and he is just walling himself in. Protecting his economy while he protects the oceans. This tower did go up. Zupi distracting with the villager while he puts his own tower up. This tower will make it. Um, it will be able to take out the tower of Lix just because he will be able to garrison more villagers in. And he does not lose a villager there. That is lucky on his part. But we do see a villager sneaking out and... She almost made it to underneath the tower, but they decided to bail out of the tower themselves and block it off. So main focal point right now, obviously with scouts coming in, it's going to be a big deal. And I think this tower is going to go down very quickly for Zupi. Not much he can do. He does have a spearman out that will damage some of the scouts, but it is not enough at this point in time. We do see a siege workshop coming up for the Persian player on the east in Velez. And in the meantime, northern side, 
just booming up a little bit. Yo, maintaining the boom. He is still fighting for water control. Max is pushed back a little bit, but nothing too crazy. We also see a little bit of a battle between Velez and Vivi on the ocean of the northwest too. Vivi, just a tight little base here. But the main focal points, of course, being the two players who are battling on the east and in the south. This tower was able to stay up longer than I initially expected. However, it does still go down. And Vivi, there we go, playing as the Spanish. He gets that castle up and they even block out this scout. No, they don't. There's a hole. There's always a hole. Vivi should know that by now. This... Knight will not make it in to deny this castle. This castle will go up and we will see conquistadors coming out fairly yeah. quickly. Licks towering the wood line of Zupi. Zupi really being pushed into a corner now. Not many places he can go with these scouts running around. He's got barely any military himself, just a couple spearmen. And he is building a market in a totally unideal un location, but he's building it nonetheless. You see now most of the players are going up to the castle age, however there are a few who are still remaining in feudal age. Zupi obviously having a very very damaged economy, only 26 villagers at this point in time. Rubenstock only at 30 and he has been mostly untouched, but he has gone for a fast castle strategy and is going to try and put out some military as quickly as possible. See here, Paladin did try to bring this castle up, but it was denied, and this knight makes it into the wood line. A lot of damage being put out right now, as Paladin has to force up a monastery. And when we look at the water right now, yo, hurting a little bit, being still in the feudal age as the Max with castle war galleys, they're able to fight back a lot. Horrible economy right now. When we look at Zupi, but the name of the game for Zupi is Waste the Time of Licks and Yo. That's all they need, because right now, this castle being denied, it is going to go down eventually, it will take quite a while, and with a couple of key swords, it will be pushed back this fight. But this castle being slowed down this much has done wonders, because it has allowed Velez to boom up behind, the Max is booming up in the back. And we will start to see, you got it, Arambai coming out real quick. But see? not enough to take out this castle. The Conquistadors have come forward, as well as a forward villager from Vivi. With Vivi right now, we are seeing him boom up a little bit right now. He's got his third TC going up at the current moment. And we do see still these two players in the middle. They're the only players still in feudal because Lix has decided to be forever feudal and tower rush as much as possible. Arambai are raiding in the back of Lix's base right now. Nothing he can do because he doesn't have any defense at home. Issue, of course, being with Arambai, horrible accuracy with these little darts that they got. But it's better than nothing. And right now he's causing delays and he is damaging the economy. Not quite as bad as this economy, but still pretty bad. The Max and Yo still duking it out here. We do see Vivi coming in with some fires that will help out to push the Finnish players back. But while we are talking, it has gotten into a little bit of a stalemate on the west. We do see Conquistadors pushing, trying to deny this town center. They will take a little bit of damage, but they do take out the Mangonel of Velez. And the, that is great micro right there from Vivi. Fantastic play on his part, as Arambai are streaming across the map at this point in time and are going straight into Licks. The Max, though, would be very concerned if I was the other team. The Max just booming, just adding in as many war galleys as he can. Not doing any land military, but he has got a great economy backing this up. Still though, not the most villagers. I would have expected a little bit higher. He's got the most in the game, um, but obviously building those war galleys, it has delayed a little bit, but I mean 74 is not anything to write home about.
he is losing the water to the war galleys of Yo. That is massive, with obviously the importance of water being being so vital in a nomad game. The Chinese players being able to have a lot of control Crazy right music. now. As Rattan archers come forward and they are starting to come out and attack. This tower has gone down on the north side of Zuki's base, but his economy is still in shambles. Arambai will come and help out. They will be able to actually take out this tower fairly easily. Arambai just having such high attack that it does a lot of damage right off the bat. But Rubenstock choosing instead to go over to Yo's base and do some attacking there. Zupi at 28 villagers. So if you see, the lead the Max has right now does not cancel, cancel out the, just the sheer low numbers that Zupi has at this point in time. Rubenstock really looking to do as much damage with these Arambai as possible. He does take out quite a few villagers actually. He is able to do quite a bit of damage, doesn't lose an Arambai, but he does lose a lot of HP as he continues to stream across and he drops a castle right on Lix. The Max building a fourth TC now. Will it get denied if these Conquistadors move forward any quicker? They won't be able to get there in time to deny it, so that town center will go up. And we do see Lix is now in the Castle Age. Zupi, the only player not, and he is fleeing with his entire base, having to run. But what he has done is he has delayed Lix enough for, the, for Rubenstock to be able to get this castle up, for them to be able to be aggressive towards Yo, who is winning water. That has allowed them to gain quite a bit. But right now, they are being pushed fully back, the Finnish players. They will take out the fishing ships of Paladin, but will that be enough? We will see. Paladin dropping a castle forward will for sure get this castle up on the TC of Velez. May lose one or two villagers in the meantime, but that is quite alright. Definitely worth it when you are dropping a castle right on your enemy. Zupi, not a big fan of this town center placement. It is right next to a castle that Vivi is putting up. That castle will go up. And Zupi, oh, just tough luck again. Horrible location. And he is having to flee. Once again, he will lose that town center and he is heading north. Arambai now at such a mass that they might even be able to take out town centers. Rubenstock thinking twice about it. He does go back a little bit to the north as... Zupi's base has been completely desolated. Lick still doing a little bit of damage down there, but now the focus is on the Max. Max almost at 100 villagers. The next best player being at 78, 80. Yo just made it too. So Rubenstock's da damage has done a little bit. The one thing about the Max is he only got five military, and that military is going down pretty quick with those monks getting shot down. This town center will go down for Velez on the front, as we do see Paladin is pushing back with Mangonels and a Castle Rush as well. But Vivi pushing on the Max is causing a lot more damage than anything else. Conquistor is just so hard to battle against in Castle Age. Once you get to Imperial Age, it is a little bit easier, and when I say Imperial Age, of course Velez is on his way up. Oh no, the Max putting this castle up, it does get spotted by the Conquistadors, it will still go up, but my goodness, the massacre happening right here, look at the villagers dying for the max, he is dropping like crazy, still well ahead of the other players as far as villager counts, but not very good, he is bringing his mangonel in to take care of these Conquistadors, hopefully we see a great shot here, and Conquistadors, look at them go down like crazy. Vivi losing a lot of his advantage there, but he does have three rams moving forward. Not much that the Max has battling against that, Max just drops the TC right next door. Keystores though will sit just out of range, and will begin to take out the 
town center villagers right now. So right now, when we look in the east, we see Velez is starting to mass up knights. He is booming a lot. Persians, very strong civilization, and he is on his way to Imperial Age. Once he gets to Imperial Age, he will be able to take out the castles and really cause a lot of damage. Rubenstock, speaking of damage, is still causing issues in the back of Yo's base. He is running around with these Arambite. He is killing villagers, and that is huge because Yo is the villager lead for the Chinese team right now. This little castle, just speaking. such a pain. And we see as a castle is being built on the front, Velez has reached the Imperial Age. He's the first one by far. Paladin has clicked up right now, but he is a long ways away at this point in time. Right off the bat, we see the armor coming in for these knights. Trebuchet coming from this castle. Trebuchet will be able to take out the castles, and he will have a Trebuchet lead right off the bat. Meanwhile, on the west side, we do see another castle from Rubenstock being dropped on the town center of Yo causing as much damage as he could right now. Even dropping a town center on this stone back here to just collect the resources he can. Rubenstock right now is all over the map. He's collecting gold here. He's a main base in the north. He's got people in the west all over the place right now. The main focus is going to be on this trebuchet war with the two players who are going to be in the Imperial Age. Yo is not too far behind, mind you, but this... There's two trebuchets already taking down Paladin's castles before he's even hit the castle age. Meanwhile, if we take a look at the aggression that Vivi had earlier on, it has been stayed by the Max. Max is protected. Zupi just booming up at this point in time. Still in the feudal age. Long ways away from clicking up right now. I'd like to see Cavalier clicked up. For Velez, but right now he just doesn't have the economy to back it up. That's putting so all of his resources in taking out these castles first. This castle will go down now, and this castle will be next. Vivi, in the meantime, moving forward, trying to do more damage to Zupi. This castle from Rubensock is going to do a lot to help out, but long term, these conquistadors and these rams, there's nothing that Rubenstock can really do. Without the, minimum, without the minimum range. And Yo, with water control, he's going to sit as close as he can to the economy of Velez and push, push, push. Meanwhile, the max, how many TCs does he have? Six, seven TCs. He already lost one as well. That is a huge, huge impact. And the Knights having to run back, help protect this castle just so they can keep Zupi alive. These knights should be would be much better used forward against the Rattan archers and Manganels. Manganels gonna do a lot of damage against these trebuchets if they can get in close. The name of the game is staying away when you're playing a ranged game. Rubenstock, great job. He's got a large number of Arambai right now in the back of Yo's base, causing damage, causing as much of a delay as he can, and just being a nuisance. Zupi finally making it up to the castle age. He is 60% of the way there. And Velez is losing a mining camp that he doesn't even need anymore. These two rams, they are capped rams, but likely will not make it close enough with the cavalier to protect. So we now officially have sides. North versus south. Unless you're, of course, Rubenstock, in which case you are all over the map. The South, the Chinese team, they are pushing in on multiple angles, trying to take out as much as possible, massing up Rattan archers. That will start to add up, and even moving forward with a castle. Rubenstock will lose this castle, and Zupi is in a world of pain once again. Nothing really he can do to fight back against this army. Just a few rams and some conquistadors, and really nothing he can do. Meanwhile, Cavalier going forward for Velez. Velez looking to push into the economy of Paladin as hard as possible. The Max likely will start adding some military of his own. He is. He's going to for Latis. And 
we will see him, now that he's in the Imperial Age, going to Imperial. But, if you're playing as the Vietnamese, you've got Halberdier in your arsenal. Halberdier, oof, such a rough counter for these Cavaliers. Need to see some sort of counter to the Halberdier. The Cavaliers are not good enough, and with that, that's it. The GG is called. The army is not yet even out for the max. Might have waited a little bit too long in that case. But that is it. Zupi was down to just 17 villagers, all of which were idle at the end there. So we did see he got pushed away, pushed away, pushed away. And when we look at Rubenstock, 58 villagers, but what he was able to do is just cause delays and cause damage. Not quite enough damage in order for them to win, as he did start losing his castles to the enemy. Right here, I think the game changing, the game winning move was Paladin going into Halberdier, taking out these Cavalier. There was really nothing holding them back after that, because all that there was that to back up the Cavalier would have been more Cavalry. Alright, let's take a quick look at the statistics. That'll do it for now. Fairly evenly dispersed, however, mostly in favor of the Chinese team. Militarily, of course, Vivi with those conquistadors, fantastic kill number. Didn't lose many many uh, buildings at all. Didn't even have the largest army. But if you look at the army sizes, this too from Zupi really dropping down. Overall, though, great game. The max might have overboomed. However, the winning blow was the halberdiers. Fantastic. You take care.